All right, so just like we did with MP1, once you access the MP2 test suites, you're gonna to need to do some work to get the project to the point where it compiles. So what I've done here is I've skipped a few steps that we went over last time, but I think you guys will be able to, to complete those. So I've accessed the MP2 test suites, uh, downloaded them from the website. I've moved them into the right spot. So I'm in the project view like I normally am, and I've moved them into the directory next to my MP0 and my MP1 tests. Now, MP2 does build on top of MP1 in a much more direct way than MP1 built on top of MP0. So if you haven't finished MP1, you really are gonna to need to wrap that up before you can start work on MP2. So, you know, before you are you get to MP2, you probably wanna have, you know, things working on MP1, so your MP1 test suites are passing. Um, I've downloaded the MP2 test suites, I've moved them into position, and then I've also changed grade.yaml to refer to the second checkpoint, because that's what we're working on now. Okay, so let's go back and let's look at the MP2. And, and this time, let's be a little bit more intentional about it than we were last time in terms of figuring out what's broken. Um, this is also covered in the MP description, uh, but there's a couple of things to notice here. So the first of all is that it's trying to import a non-existent class from the models package. Uh, and so it looks like it's expecting me to have a new model. That's where the summary model is. That's where the course model is that you developed last time, this new rating model. Um, and so let's let's start by just um, by just creating that. So I'm going to go main Java, uh, go into the models uh, folder, and I'll do new uh, Java class. I'll call it rating. Uh, this is going to store rating information. I do want to add it to my project because it's a new file that I want to get to track. If I don't do this, you might have problems when you submit. Um, all right, so I'm going to go back here. Let's hit the next error. By the way, if you don't know this, if you hit F2 in Android Studio, at least in my setup, it might be a different key in yours, it'll take you to the next problem in the file. Now here, what it's saying is that there's a constant that's part of rating.java that we haven't yet defined. And so let's go ahead and add that. Um, this is a, um, a, a special value that we're using to indicate uh, a rating value for a course that hasn't yet been rated. Um, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this up. Uh, I think these are out of order now. So it's static final double, uh, and then uh, rating indicated that the course has not been rated yet. Okay, I'll add that. Um, this is gonna, you know, want me to put a, I'll, I'll put a you know, text style comment in here, rating class for storing client ratings of courses. I'll explain a little bit about what that means. Uh, okay, good. Um, now, that works, okay? So I've, I've, I've gotten rid of that problem. Now, again, this is described in the write-up, but you know, it's not a bad idea to start to be able to use a test suite like this to get some hints about what needs to happen. So um, it looks like my client is now expected to have a get rating method. Um, and that rating method is supposed to take, uh, in this case, it looks like it takes a summary, uh, a string, and then um, it also looks like the callbacks that we've created before on our client have a new member as well, which is called your rating. And that takes a summary and a rating object. So like we did in the past, we can essentially stub these out um, and we could put in like a, an assertion to indicate that they're not finished or something like that. So let's go ahead and do that. So we need this get rating method. So the first thing actually I'll, I'll add is the uh, uh, our callback. So there's something called, it looks like uh, your rating, which takes a summary as its first, or, or, or I'm saying, sorry, passes back. So this is a callback. This is something that the caller of the method provides so that they can receive information when the call is complete. Um, and so what we're passing back here is a summary and then a rating, and we've just created that rating. Uh, so we'll do this. So that, that's there now. Now, Chuck Style is going to complain about this. That's okay. I'm, I'm going to leave that alone for now. Uh, at least the callback is no longer a problem, but I still have this get rating method that I need to provide. Um, let's go down, we'll put that down here underneath um, get rating. Um, now, this is going to take a similar parameter list to our get course parameter list. Uh, it takes, uh, it accepts a, a summary. I'll just return, actually this doesn't even need to do anything, this is void. Uh, it accepts a summary uh, it also accepts a callback so that it can uh, return the information when it's finished. Um, what's different here is that we're passing an ID. 
and we'll talk a little bit more later about what this is, but I'm gonna add this parameter. This is a string, um, final string, I'll call this client ID, um, and that's gonna be used by the get rating method in its communications with our backend server. Okay, so that seems to work now. Now, one of the things you'll notice about that rating model that we created a minute ago, and this is again in the write-up, is that it has an ID and a rating. Those are, it has at least those properties, and at least those are the properties that the test suite is relying on being there. Um, and actually, the test suite isn't even relying on these properties being there. Uh, it's relying on the getters being there. Um, and so let's add some fields, and we can see if we hover over this, uh, it says cannot resolve this method, get ID. Um, if you look at the description of this, we're expecting get ID to return a string um, and get rating to return a double. So let's create those methods. Um, public um, string get ID, and we'll just return, uh, actually I'll just do this, sort of false, well no, uh, throw new, uh, un, I think there's an unimplemented, uh, not yet. Uh, oh, uh, maybe I'm, making this up. Okay, we'll just say, let's just throw in a legal uh, argument exception um, or a legal state exception, how about that? Uh, we'll say not yet implemented, um, and I did, okay? And then we need to return something too, otherwise it's gonna be, well, you know what? I guess I don't need to return something. Okay, good. Uh, this is check style complaining. I'll also put in a um, get rating method because I need that too. That is going to return a double. And the same thing, I'm just gonna, you know, uh, stub these out. This rating class is not that complicated. We're, we're almost done with it. I'm just avoiding showing you exactly what you need to do to finish, uh, but you're pretty close at this point. Okay, so those uh, work. And now I've got this, you know, again, I've got this other, um, this other method in the client called post rating. Now, that's interesting. Um, and it looks like, what does that take? It looks like it takes as a first parameter, a summary. Um, that's pretty common. That's how we identify a course. Uh, as a second parameter, a rating. And now I have a, uh, another problem, and I think I'll just leave this one and let you finish it because the rating needs a constructor. By the time we finish the rating constructor, well, we, we can add the rating constructor just to get this to compile. Um, but we're pretty close. Once we're done with that, we're all we're actually done. Uh, and so let's, let's go ahead and do that. Let's fix the problem in rating first since we're already there. Uh, we need a constructor. Um, we're gonna call it rating. Um, I think, can I just do this? Well, let's just, yeah. Sometimes it'll autocomplete, but I guess not for this. So, um, and this is going to accept an ID and a rating. So the idea is that this rating models a single rating from a single client. We need a way to identify the different clients that are connected to our server because different clients might have different ratings for the same course. And so eventually, this is not part of this checkpoint, but um, you know, if you wanted to continue this project, what you'd probably do next is you'd build something that you would allow you to see like the average of all the ratings for a particular class. Okay. Um, so for now, we're just storing a rating for a single client, like a single device that's attached to our server. Uh, we're going to talk in a few minutes about how the clients in this particular model identify themselves. Um, but for now, I need this constructor. Um, and it takes the ID first, so this is string set, uh, set ID and a double set rating. And for now, what I'll do is I'll just do the same thing I've done here, which is that I'll just throw. Um, and I think it's gonna want these to be final, which is fine. Uh, and then I've got some errors here caused by check style problems that I'll, I'll let you fix. Uh, so now I've got a way to create a rating. And now the last thing I need to do is step out this post rating method. And what I should really do here, I guess, is, is do the same thing I've been doing before, which is uh, just throwing a new uh, legal state exception and saying not yet implemented. This is, a good, this is a good habit to get into, just so stuff doesn't fail silently. You kind of want it to fail loudly. Um, but I also have a second method I'm gonna to need to add to this, which is gonna be called post rating. Um, now, what are the parameters that it's gonna take? It needs a summary, a rating, and then callbacks. So a summary, rather than a client, I'm gonna pass a final rating, rating, and then callbacks. Okay, so this looks like there's a, there's a yeah, that's okay. Uh, we can get rid of this suppression if you want, it doesn't matter, the actual test suite will use it, but I'm just trying to clean this up fully. Um, I've got the same problem here, uh, and we're good. Okay, awesome. So at this point, we should be able to run this test suite. Let's try that. Um, it, it's not going to pass. Uh, we wouldn't expect that, but we can at least run it and we can kind of see where we are. And 
and a lot of these are going to throw various things, you know, because we, we put in all of these assertions in various places. Uh, none of these should pass yet, obviously. Um, yeah, okay, so these are all broken, great. Uh, I should also, now, I would suggest that you do the same thing that we did last time, which is that you kind of add this as a, uh, you save this run configuration so you can use it before uh, again. So let me go in here, edit configurations. I actually have this one that I just set up, so I'll, I'll finish this one, and you say store as project file. That way it's saved in your repository. Um, and if you clone this project again, you would have access to these run configurations. If you don't do that, they only they don't get saved by Git. And so if you clone the repository on a different machine, you, you wouldn't have them. So anything that you're gonna test on a regular basis, I would suggest doing that. Okay, so now we can run our test suites again. I wouldn't expect anything to be different this time, but why don't we do this just for fun? And then we'll run the grader just to make sure that works. Um, and at that point, we'll kind of be off and running uh, on, on this particular uh, assignment. Uh, so I'll run grade and that should, uh, I think I have some check stylers too, so I'm probably gonna end up with a big fat zero right now, which is a good, good place to start, right? You don't expect too much more than that from our first run of the grader after only a few minutes worth of work. Um, let me suggest, as I've suggested before on this particular MP, that you work sequentially through the uh, test suites that you've been given. Um, you know, you, you start, okay, so let's see here, my grade task finished and I got a zero, yes. Okay, good starting point. Um, you know, you, you work uh, in, in order. Um, and, and we've really set this up to, to try to enable it. So the first test worth 15 points uh, is, and this is in order in the, in the uh, test file, not in order in the display here. So the first one is test server git rating. This tests the new rating route that you need to set up on your server and make sure that when it requests rating for a course, it gets back this not found uh, rating initially because no ratings have actually been submitted yet. The next thing you should, and, and you know, the next thing you should do is test the post rating uh, method. So this tests uh, your new, and we'll talk a little bit about post in a minute, your new methods that are gonna communicate data with the server. And so, you know, you finish these. So again, you finish the server side stuff. Once that works, then you move on to these new, and, and the server side code, we haven't ended, had, we have not, added any stubs for it. You'll have to do that yourself. Um, the next thing you'll do is you'll go to the client and you'll start doing some work in the client to figure out how to get that to communicate with those new server routes that you just added. Um, and so we've got a couple of tests here for client side stuff, right? We have uh, client get rating and client post rating. So those two new client methods that we just stepped out communicate with your server side methods in order to get things to work properly. And then the final part is actually the UI. Um, and that's kind of, that's actually pretty common when you're building new things is to kind of like get all of the, the back end and the library code that you need to get your client programming code to work, your back end server side code to work, getting them to communicate properly, just driven by the test suite, and next actually start to fit things into the UI. So once we're done uh, with all those and all those uh, methods work properly, the last thing to do is to actually modify the UI so that it has this new rating bar and the rating bar works properly and, and, and sends uh, new ratings back to the server as, as appropriate. Okay, so that's how to get started uh, with MP2.